GSAP just dropped a huge update to split text. In this lesson, you'll learn how to animate text like a pro, split rich text safely, and prevent flicker while avoiding a common mistake. If you'd like to copy the code without cloning the project, simply scroll down and click open in Webflow. And I have different pages for each of the examples we're gonna look at today. So if we wanted this timeline sequence, we'd go to that page and open the embed at the top. And then we'd copy this first uh, code into your site settings head code. This next would go in your site settings footer code. And this last one here goes in your page settings footer code for this example. Now that GSAP is included in Webflow, we can enable it by going to settings here in the designer and we'll head over to GSAP and we'll enable GSAP. We'll also include scroll trigger and split text in this case, and we'll save that. So if we head over to our embed at the top, we'll notice I have a word animation where we have an attribute of data word reveal with a value of true. When we set that on an element, we're gonna animate that element. So here on this rich text, I'll set that data word reveal and the value will be true. And so now if we go ahead and preview here and we enable custom code here at the bottom, what we'll notice is those words inside the heading will animate. But we have this flicker where the heading is there initially, then it gets hidden and then the animation starts. So if we want to fix that, what we'll need to do is set some initial styles. So what I would normally put this is in the site settings head code, that way it applies across all pages. And we'll say anytime there's an element with an attribute of data prevent flicker true, then we'll set that element to hidden by default. And later on in our code, we'll bring that element back to being visible. But if we just left it like this, that means whenever a user has JavaScript disabled, all the text on the page would be hidden. So what we need to do is include inside a no script tag, um, some styles that bring those elements back to being visible. So if a user ever has JavaScript disabled, they'll still be able to see all of our text. Now we'll want to apply this attribute to the actual heading element. So here on the uh, rich text, we'll give it that data prevent flicker value of true. And now if we go ahead and preview this, we should notice there's the text is completely hidden until the animation starts. Now that's looking good there, but say we want to disable the animation for some of our heading components. We can link this value of data word reveal to a component field. We can call this animate. And that way for some instances of this heading, we can turn the animation off and we can enable it for others. Now, if we do turn that animation off, we also wanna make sure we're turning the prevent flicker off. Otherwise that heading will just be hidden indefinitely. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll link the data prevent flicker to that same component prop. And that way, if we set false for the animation, it'll also turn off the flicker prevent um, from one place. Now, one other code we'll need, and I usually include this in site settings footer code, is inside this DOM content loadout, we want to register our plugins to let GSAP know which ones we're using. And you just comma separate any plugins you're gonna use in here. I've also included this check so that if GSAP doesn't load for any reason, it'll add a class of GSAP not found to our HTML element. And when that class is on the HTML, it'll make sure the text isn't hidden. So that way, if GSAP isn't loaded, users can still see our text. We're gonna turn off that initial prevent flicker. And so this is just included once in site settings head code. This would be included once in site settings footer code, and that'll apply to the entire site. Now, for any section specific or page specific animations, we would follow that up here. And here inside this DOM content loaded, uh, I'm looping through everything with a data word reveal attribute and selecting each of those text elements one by one and splitting them here. So the split is gonna go with the actual animation because the settings we configure here will be different from animation to animation. If you're using a line animation, you would wanna include lines in here, um, but there is some extra things we need to do for line animations, which we'll cover later. So here I'm just splitting by words and characters, and I've decided to wrap each word in a mask div. So you can wrap each word in the mask div, you can wrap the characters or even the lines in a mask div. In this case, because I want the words to be clipped, so by including mask words here, what it's actually doing is each word element is wrapped in an extra div in its own word mask div. And that word mask div is set to overflow clip. So if we slide up or down the words inside of this, it'll look like they're clipped within this mask. 
So one thing issue we'll run into here is we'll notice that our descenders here on some of our letters are getting clipped here. So to make sure the bottom of our letters here aren't getting clipped, what we'll do is inside our embed here, I've gone ahead and we'll add in this code. So anytime we have a line mask, word mask, or character mask, we're gonna add some extra top and bottom padding and we'll counteract that with some negative top and bottom margin. And that way the spacing doesn't feel off, but we're giving ourselves a little bit more space here. And you may need to increase or decrease this number depending on the font you're using. But if we go ahead and save that, we'll notice that the letters will no longer be clipped. And we don't wanna add too much space there because it affects when these letters are actually shown. Um, so here I've just added a little bit of extra space to make sure I can see the bottom of those letters like so. Now, if we head back here and check out our loop, so after we split up the text here, uh, and I'm saving it in a variable called split, then we can use those elements down here. In this case, I've decided to animate the words, but we could animate the characters or the lines or whatever we're actually splitting there. Um, we, would, we could select that like so, and then apply any kind of animation to it. I've pushed it down by 110% of its own height. I've added a little bit of start delay, some duration, and some stagger like so. And then after our timeline is completely set up, this is when we grab the entire original text element and we set its visibility back to visible. So now that we know like all our letters are hidden, they're in our the initial state, we can set the parent back to visible and not get any flicker. So we're doing that there at the bottom. Now here I did include, I'm not actually splitting the text element itself since this is a rich text and it's uh, the headings, the H1 and H2 are children inside of the rich text. So if you split the rich text directly, we can run into issues where it creates multiple heading tags. So instead we wanna make sure we're splitting the children um, if this attribute is applied to a rich text. If you're applying it directly to a heading element, then you would wanna split that heading uh, directly. Uh, but when on rich text, we want to make sure we're splitting the children like so. Text wrap balance isn't compatible with split text. So if you have that style applied to your heading tags, be sure to reset the text wrap back to wrap, which is the default value for any headings that are being animated. So for our second example on this next page, we'll look at using a split text in a sequence. So we'll create a custom animation for this hero section. We have this global heading rich text we want to split up, and then we'll be animating the this image from a height of 0% back to its original 100% height. And we have this content div that holds the paragraph and button. So this uh, first part is all the same code from before that just goes once in site settings. And then this is the code specific to this animation. So we loop through every instance of this section on the page. And inside of this section, we'll find the global heading and we'll find the image and the content div related to this one section. And then we go ahead and split the heading up. Now, because it's a rich text, we're grabbing its children here and we're adding that word mask like so. And then we can set up our timeline. So we animate the image from height zero back to full height. Inside of this split, which is the heading, we're grabbing the words and we'll stagger those in. And then on the content, we'll fade that in as well. Now, underneath the timeline, this is where we're going to find anything inside our section that has a data prevent attribute, and we'll set it to be visible. So after all the initial states on the timeline are set up, we can set anything with this attribute to visible. Now, I don't have that attribute on anything right now, so we'll get that annoying flicker where we saw the content and the image being fully revealed first before the image, uh, the animation kicked in. Now, what we could do is set that data prevent flicker on the whole container, but that's going to hide the whole container till the animation starts. And then the container would be instantly revealed and we'd see this gray square kind of pop in. We want this to be there from the start on page load. Uh, so what we would need to do instead is hide just the image until the animation is ready to start. So on that image, we'd give it the data prevent flicker in the value of true. And then um, here we'd also want to hide, we can just hide this entire column, which has the elements that we're gonna animate inside of it. So we'll add that data um, prevent flicker and the value will be true. And that way both of those elements are hidden, but the gray box is still there right from the start. 
and we get a nice smooth intro with no flicker. Now for the last example, we'll look at a line animation. And for this one, we're gonna want to include our script inside a fonts ready. So that way it only runs after the custom fonts are loaded and the line split doesn't get messed up when a new font loads in. So here we're splitting by lines and we need to set auto split true so that way when we resize our window width, it resplits the lines into the correct place. In this case, I've chosen to mask the lines so each line will be wrapped in an extra div. And we need to include our animation in this case inside the on split. So that way, every time the window is resized, it reruns the animation and it calculates the animation again based on the new lines that were created. And again, after the timeline is set up, we just go ahead and set that parent back to visible. So all of the same flicker protection and everything we're doing is still up there. So what we'll notice here is on page load, our lines sort of animate in. We can scroll into view of a new section and that animates here. And when we resize our window, notice how the words are gonna be on their own line at first, but then when I release it, they're grouped together here. So it's kind of de-bounced a little bit, but you'll notice like a word's on its own line and then eventually the split is rerun and they're grouped back together in the correct place. And that animation is gonna rerun just like so um, because we have it inside of that callback. So that's a high level overview of how to use GSAP split. Be sure to check out my complete crash course on GSAP to learn it from the start.